would now like to introduce you to Rowena Duncan. As you uh, may have listened to her already today, if you listened to the country before you came on, uh, Rowena is the proud to be the producer of the country, the longest running rural radio show in New Zealand. And along with pushing the buttons and taking the show to air at midday each weekday, she also contributes to the show's direction, hunts down people to interview and tries to keep the show's host, Jamie Mackay, in line, as we know is a big, big mission in itself. As New Zealand's uh, champion cowpat thrower and second best gumboot thrower in the world, she is more than qualified to do that job, as well as every day she helps share farmers' views and stories. So Rowena is going to share with us today some of her observations, learnings and recommendations to you as catchment groups and producers on how to share your story from a social network side of things. So welcome Rowena and I will get your slides up for you. Thanks so much, Liv. And yeah, it wasn't so much um, me trying to control Jamie Mackay as him trying to control me today as we went to air and Simon Bridges was stepping away from politics and I'm screeching down the hallway to get him, get him now. So uh, that was quite an exciting hour. Uh, so yeah, obviously social media plays a massive role for, for telling your story. And what we've got on screen now, obviously, is a phone. Everything is literally at our fingertips now, which is something that you know, way back in the day, we didn't used to have, we couldn't just, you know, push a button and connect with people all over the world. So this is a real, real positive, I think, especially when it comes to catchment groups, because your audience is literally at your fingertips. Um, if we go through to the next slide, uh, do I have to control it level? You will. I'm in control, you're good. Yeah, this is great. Uh, thank you for pushing the buttons for me. Uh, so obviously we all know what social media is. Social networking is all about engagement. It is connecting with people. It's connecting with your audience. It's how you're able to, start to tell your story. And obviously there's a different range of social media channels available for you. We have that luxury now. But often uh, at the bottom here, we can see social media and social networks can direct farmers back for more information. So all you're trying to do is whet their appetite a bit, show them a bit about what you're about. And if it resonates with them, they can go and find somewhere else and find some more information. You can weave your messaging through online spaces that the community uses. You know, you understand a lot of where your consumers are and how you can connect with them. And you can also respond really quickly as well, which is really, it can be really fantastic. It can also be a bit of a downfall if you don't think it through. Um, so in terms of my interpretation of social media on the next slide, I keep it very, very simple. There are two golden rules, according to me. I'm not the oracle of all things social media, but the first one is be social. It is literally in the name. It is called social media for a reason. And we start to fall apart when people don't remember that. And the other one is don't be a dick. Uh, if we keep to those two rules, you can't go too far bad. Uh, now on the next slide, this is my boss. Jamie Mackay, who's the one with the dark hair and the suit. The other one is a gentleman by the name of Lee Piper. That is how business used to be done on a massive, I don't even know, shoebox of a phone carrying a briefcase. We have come a long way since then. Uh, so the first social media I want to touch on uh, channel at the moment is Twitter. So this is something I wasn't massively uh, familiar with when I came back from overseas, from farming overseas. Uh, and got amongst it a few years ago. And there are some people doing some really good things on social media. The first of all is Sophie Barnes, Sheepish Sophie. Now, she is absolutely fantastic. It's a wee lass from the other side of the world. She's come to New Zealand. She's got a massive following. This was uh, quite a while ago that I pulled this screenshot. She had 10,000 followers. She's probably a lot more than that now. And she does it by sharing her life, sharing her health issues. That helps resonate with people. Sharing cute little lamb. You know, who Who's not going to see Little Piglet and think, oh my gosh, is that the cutest thing you've ever seen? So uh, it's really good to just even think a simple photo, something you take for granted. Look, in the top left corner, bringing home a lamb, putting it in front of the fire. It's showing people that you care. And that's a point that I'm going to come back to uh, later. We've also got uh, another guy by the name of Sam Owen, who's a Welsh, a Welsh guy, farms in New Zealand. He puts a photo on Twitter, we can see there of a cow in his swimming pool. I mean, who's not going to think that's a bit weird? 
uh, we picked it up. We got him on the radio to talk about it. It turned into a story that appears on the country. It gets syndicated by the New Zealand Herald, who they decided their social media people decided it was trending. Uh, so this is the impact that little photos can have. It obviously shows you that if you put the wrong photo out there, it escalates really quickly, but also positive, positive photos can have a really good impact as well. Um, when you also get things wrong, you find yourself in with these kind of headlines. So this is to show you that even the best can get it wrong. You look there last week, New Zealand Rugby, uh, they had to apologise. You know, it's not just individuals getting it wrong. United Nations, they shouldn't be getting it wrong. They do. Uh, police are apologising there. Again, it's uh, other people can get things wrong. It's just thinking and being aware that if you do, um, you know, put something out there a little controversial or uh just use your litmus test, talk to other people if you think it might be a little edgy, uh, you can end up as headlines. Uh, one thing I also love about social media, and this might be relevant for catchments as well, is on the next slide where we see that, you know, in ag, there's such a community out there. By using hashtags like this ag chat MZ, Ben Dooley, a farmer down in Southland, he's got a question out there. People can click on that. You know, someone sends him an article to say, look, here's something from the Herald that talks about how you get sheep abortions. And he say, cheers, guys. I think I'll fence it off. So you can see how people do use social media as a real source of information as well. Uh, we've got more examples here using ag chat MZ. Uh, people just wanting to share their day. Look, Mel Slattery there, nearly halfway, 11 days in. We're pretty happy about that. You know, it's it's not always about, hey, we're doing this because this. It's also just showing parts of your farming life that help people to connect. It help gives, gives you authenticity so people can see you're out there walking the walk. Like if I actually end up getting out on farm, I usually try and put a photo up there to uh, enhance my rural credentials, uh, which are a few years removed. But it's great to see farmers just sharing their stories. And I think that's where we can all learn a little bit from, uh, you know, figure catchment groups. It might be you're out there planting. You're all planting some trees and things like that. Or, you know, you've got a bit of a working bee on. You've even got a catch up. Share that photo. Put the photo up. Explain what you're talking about. You don't have to go into massive depth. But just showing that you're all getting together. I think you underestimate sometimes the impact of that. Uh, on Facebook, we've got some really good uh, community groups that also really help. We've got Farm for Life, Tangaroa Walker down south. You know, he's he's trying to put sexy back in, in farming is how he terms it when he was on the show. You know, he's just sharing simple videos of what he does on farm um, and, you know, just resonating with people, non-farmers, non or even if they are young farmers getting into the industry, there's a great resource there. And he makes it look fun. He makes it look appealing. He looks like he's enjoying himself. And I think that's also something that's really important. Uh, we've got Farming Mums NZ. Uh, I'm not a mum. Jamie made me join the group because we had the, the founder of it on our show. Uh, and I love it. It's a really safe space where you can go and ask questions um, and actually have some advice. It's a closed group as well, so it's not for everyone. But there are groups like that, that if you can find people with similar uh, you know, feelings about farming to you, you have a really good community there that if you're, you're wondering for help or something like that, you can go to them. As well, we've got NZ Farming, which is one of the massive success stories. I think something like 210,000 people like their page. Uh, they don't always get it right, but <laughs> they try. Uh, this is another one. This is um, a, a video on Snapchat I got sent from uh, the Barretts in Taranaki. You might recognize the name if you're familiar with rugby, Bowden, Geordie, Scott, whoever's. Uh, that's their parents. Uh, Robin sent that through to me to say, look, that's their worker who uh, lost a, a uh, what is it, a juicy calf there down a wee stream there. The, the water obviously was up. Uh, so he jumps in and goes and gets the calf. We, I didn't even think anything of it. Showed Jamie, I'm like, hey, look what Rob sent on Snapchat. And he's like, put it on social media. So I checked with her first. We put it up there, 13,000 likes, 328 comments, 774 shares. 
just something that we take for granted every day. If we lose a calf in a stream, of course you're bloody going to jump in and get it out. But we don't always under, we often underestimate the impact that, you know, just sharing that simple act, again, I'll come back to this point, shows that we care. We've also got YouTube, something I'm not massively familiar with. Uh, there are some really good farmers on there, Millennial Farmer. Again, a guy who just posts videos about what he's doing, 560,000 subscribers. So obviously, you're not all going to become that overnight, and we'll touch on that soon. But uh, just, you know, when you are thinking of how to share your story, there are so many options available, and there will be people in your catchment group who have skills in each of those different channels. Tap them use that skills, use their experience, tap them on the shoulder and say, hey, what do you know about this? What should we be putting up there? And uh, yeah, know that there are different ways of, uh, of getting your point across. Now, Trolls Live obviously is a bit of a show, but I've turned that into Trolls Live Among Us. There absolutely are horrible people um, out there, but you have a lot of options for how to kind of manage that uh, while still you know, giving people freedom of speech, though, one that we employ here at the Herald or the country, whoever it is on Facebook, is just hiding automatically keywords. So we'll have words like the F word or the C bomb, things like that, that you don't actually want showing up on your social media page. We have our swear words are probably, I think, the only thing that we have um, blocked. So they automatically become hidden. The person can see it, their friends can see it, but the general public can't, someone who's not connected with them. Don't be afraid about using this. I was always like, oh, should we, shouldn't we? We shouldn't really be censoring people. But if they're getting that nasty with their language, they have no place on your, on your page. You know, there is a time and place for it. And again, be social on social media and don't be a dick. Uh, and the final thing is a block. Now, this is for uh, don't be afraid. If there are people who are constantly harassing you, we've had people on the country here where people are commenting on something and they're going through and saying, hey, you look pretty. Uh, you want to have my bank account kind of thing, uh, that kind of thing. Or just people who are being trolls and just attacking, personal attacks is where we draw the line, attacking your people for having different um, views. There is a block button. Do not be afraid to use it. It is for, as I term it, people who uh, should have had to have that block of soap in their mouth as a child and they might have learned from it. Uh, so just in general, uh, we've finished the, the slides show now, Liv, um, just some general little things is that we do live in a world where myths can sometimes carry more weight than facts. We have seen that so much, especially during COVID. It doesn't mean that you should roll over and play dead, though. You need to engage. If you don't engage, organisations like Greenpeace, like SAFE, they are the only ones telling the story. It is their version of everything that will be out there in the media, that will be out there in social media. If you are not showing anything different to what they're saying, you need to engage with people. Um, kind of like Sally said, start with the basics. Not everyone understands even what a, a, a catchment group is. Uh, not everyone understands New Zealand for that matter. Think beyond just New Zealand, your audience, uh, your consumers are all over the world. Um, three more points, Liv, I am wrapping up. Um, it's kind of before my time, but I think there was a Pantene um, shampoo ad on the television in the 90s. And it, the catch rate was, it won't happen overnight, but it will happen. So, so take a long-term view, uh, build trust, build your brand, build that awareness. You can't expect people to start listening straight away. But when you do get them interested, you've got a foundation. As I said before, you know, if they are interested, they can go to your website and find out more. They can follow you on social media to find out what else you've been posted beforehand that they might like. Um, this is one of my two, uh, probably my biggest point. Empathy matters. People don't always care about your qualifications. Um, they don't always care that you can tell the difference between short and long lived gases or something like that until they know that you care. And in my mind, by being part of a, a catchment group, you care. So show that you care, show that you know connection with the land, show that connection with your cause, and that will help people to, to really see that you are genuine, 
you mean business, you're in this for the right reasons and that helps build that trust as well. Love. Awesome. Thank you so much, Rowena. I'm sure everyone's taken some little bits of insight out of that. And just before we bring Sally back, uh, just a few questions that were directed at some of the stuff you've just covered. And when you talk about hashtags, how many and what hashtags do you suggest? Yeah, that's a really challenging one. And I think it's usually what resonates with you. So one of the big ones on Twitter is that hashtag agchatnz. And I think... Um, yeah, it was started maybe about five or six years ago, but that's a really good one. But even if um, you just think about what your key messages are and, you know, even something like hashtag caring for the environment, it might sound naff, but you can actually get a bit of a, a um, movement going, um, responsible dairying, just any of those um, key kind of phrases that you would hear that actually present a bit of a positive light um, I think the ag chat and dead one is more for people kind of who already follow it. But if you can kind of start something going and make it so that your posts are all linked together, if people do start to get interested and they can find them easily, um, whatever works for you. Sorry, that's not a great answer. Um, but also, how many do you suggest? Um, yeah, there's no limit. Just, just you know, fill your boots. Is there anywhere people can go to maybe see what hashtags are being used out there now? Yeah, go to social media, have a look around, you know. I can't actually stress that enough with sampling the social media that you're trying to communicate with people on because you will see things done well and you will see them done not so well and you'll learn from all of that. So go and follow, um, you know, some of the industry good organisations, see what they're using, uh, go and follow some top farmers like your Sheepish Sophie, like your Sam Owens, people who are doing really good work and come from a really good place just sample the people that they're communicating with and go on, just go off in rabbit holes, have a look around. The more you see, the more you'll become familiar and comfortable with it. And there's so many rabbit holes on social media we can go down, isn't there? You can be there for hours. If and you start to feel bad though, if you start to encounter the trolls, get off it, go on another page. I have to remind myself yeah. that sometimes. Exactly. And how, like you've mentioned a couple of different social media channels there, Ro. How do people know which forum is going to be best suited for their catchment group, for example? Yeah, that's a great question too. And I think it's whatever you feel comfortable with. If you're used to Facebook, if you're familiar with how that works, start off there, but start looking on Twitter to see what it's all about. You know, it was ages before I felt comfortable to communicate with people on Twitter. I just kind of like lurked around in the background a wee bit like stalkerish wise and just saw what people did. And, and I learned that way. Um, I think, you know, the younger generation, I hate to say it coming through, they know social media really, really well. They've got a really good feel for it. But uh, us oldies, it's not as, as easy for us because we didn't grow up with it. So yeah, I spent ages just kind of watching and looking and seeing and getting a feel for it before I felt comfortable enough to engage. And now I don't use it so often now because I think, yeah, the world's become a bit of a horrible place lately <laughs> um, with all the vitriol and stuff. Um, so yeah, I've tended to kind of step back a bit, but just do whatever you're comfortable with. 